That moment where John Terry slips over. Can you remember where you were standing and what it felt like in that exact second? Yeah, brilliant. Well, yeah, it was. But then, then you, you almost your emotions are up and down. You almost celebrate. Um, I didn't care. He was my England teammate um, at all. I was buzzing. He missed. And but then when Edwin saved the penalty off of Nelka, um, for the next few minutes, you're just running around and celebrating it. I always remember Alan Stubbs at Everton. He, um, I was in this, so I come into the squad at 16, and Stubbs, he must have been about 33, 34, I'd imagine. And um, I always remember him saying to me, um, make sure you enjoy it, because it goes quick. And I remember thinking, yeah, because you're, you're mid-30s, um, you would say that, but it actually, it's actually true, it does go really quick, it goes quicker than you think. and. Um, I find myself now giving that same advice to to younger players because um, sometimes in football you get caught up a, a bit and you'll actually lose you lose sense of of enjoying it as much as you should do because um, the pressure of playing and, and winning um, and sometimes you forget to actually enjoy it. When was the time you enjoyed football though East? Was there a period like where you were like I'm just not loving this? When you lose yeah. <laughs> no I think you know, no it's not that you don't enjoy it but you're actually because of the pressure, say for instance at Manchester United, the pressure to to win trophies or win every game um, means that sometimes you actually you don't enjoy the game as much. But when you look back at it, you think, "Oh, I play well, we play well." But your mindset is just to win the game, and so you you actually don't enjoy it as much when you're actually on the pitch. Did anyone ever get onto you about your discipline? Like, did any senior pros ever tell you to keep your head in the game? Quite a few, yeah. Um, I always remember the one I used to get frustrated with, um, God rest him, is, is Ray Clement. Um, and before every England game, so I'm, I'm getting myself worked up for the game, and he used to come up to me at the start of the game and give me a big handshake and say, keep your head, don't get, don't get booked. And I'm just thinking, oh, don't, don't say that to me again. Before every game, because I used to, and that used to actually wire me up, so I'd normally go out and get a yellow card or go and boot someone um, quite early on. I'd probably say the moment which made me happiest was I was actually sat at home um, watching Chelsea v Arsenal um, and that was my first Premier League. We played Man City the day before. If Chelsea didn't beat Arsenal, we'd won the league. So I sat at home watching it um, and then Chelsea got, I can't remember his name, the Dutch guy, centre-back, got sent off for Chelsea and Arsenal went 1-0 up. So as the game was going on, I remember getting my jeans out, getting the shirt out, getting them ready to go out and so then Chelsea scored late on. So they do the game, but we won the league. So I just remember then at the time, all the players texting each other, um, organising where we're going to go and meet up and, and go out. So that was a surreal moment to win my first Premier League title. The group chat must have been absolutely popping off. It weren't group chat, it, what was it, Blackberries? Oh, um, um, BBM. Yeah, it was, it was that, yeah, so it was texting all the different players, but then we all met up and, and went out and had a, a good night. You won so much across your career, but when you win something like that, is it just like a massive celebration? It depends, yeah. Um, so this one we all met, we went to the living room and uh, the others roped off here, then all the fans come in, so there was loads of fans in there as well. So that was really good actually to celebrate with the fans. But then there's other times when I won my first trophy, actually we won the League Cup. And it was my first senior trophy um, as a player, obviously. And um, I remember we, it was in the Millennium Stadium, Wales. So we're getting the plane home, so I'm thinking, right, where are we going? And everyone went home, so I ended up back home getting a Chinese takeaway. Just thinking I'd never envisioned um, this is my first trophy, sitting at home with a Chinese takeaway. Yeah, I think first was the longest day ever. I think we kicked off at about 11pm. Um, so we had a lot of time in the hotel um, to, to kill and relax. Um, and then we got to the stadium. Uh, what, what did you do to relax? I watched six, Sister Act. Sister Act? I watched that in the afternoon. Yeah, I don't really sleep in the afternoon before a night game. Um, so I watched Sister Act, uh, got ready, uh, got myself ready for the game. We went to the stadium, um, got changed, got ready, warm up and then the game kicked off. Um, the weather was horrendous, um, the kit was really heavy, went 1-0 up. They obviously scored, equalised, then I went off. 
um, in extra time. And that was that was just as long watching that last 15 minutes of extra time and penalties than the rest of the day, really. Um, watching the penalties, knowing you can have no influence, it was horrible. Um, and then J John Terry stepped up. And I'd, I've seen JT take penalties for England and in training. He's a really good penalty taker. Um, I don't think I've ever seen him miss. And then, thankfully, he slipped. Um, he hit the post and we go on to win it. So um, that was a, a unbelievable moment. That moment where John Terry slips over. Can you remember where you were standing and what it felt like in that exact second? Yeah, brilliant. But then, then you, your almost your emotions are up and down. You almost celebrate. Um, I didn't care. He was my England teammate um, at all. I was buzzing. He missed and. Um, you celebrate, then you realise you've got to score the next penalty. So your emotions are up and down. But then when Edwin saved the penalty off of Nelka um, for the next few minutes, you're just running around and celebrating. And I remember actually, um, I was still on the pitch. I was looking for clean in the crowd and um, parents. And I remember stood there and I had a Scouse accent next, accent next to me. And he said, all right, lad, you Colleen's um, up there. She's over there. So I was thinking, who's this? So I turned around, it's a lad I know from Liverpool who he's got a photographer's outfit on, so he's he's um, he's got on the pitch. And then later on that night we've gone into the party he's in Russia, the security was maximum security and um he's in there as a waiter. So um, he's he I think he had a good night as well. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few, I mean, there's, there's the red card against Portugal, which um, I still, even being honest, still today, I don't know if I've meant it or not. I think it's just something which happened, my mind's gone blank. Um, I don't know if I've tried to, to stamp on him or if I've just um, done it accidentally. I couldn't tell you that. When that happens and, and you get sent off and you have to like walk past the dugout, what, what does that feel like? <laughs> right. it, no, it was... Um, I remember walking in, frustrated, frustrated with the referee, frustrated with myself, just with everything really. And then being in the dressing room, just thinking, if we go through, I miss the same final and final. If we get to the final, if we go out, it's my fault. So it's a no-win situation for me. So that was tough, that was a tough moment. That was a hard one to actually sit there and, and digest, um, digest that. And then, like, when the squad come back in after being um, knocked out on penalties, does someone come and talk to you? Like, what happens next? No, if all the players come in, then um, I stood up and apologised to everyone um, because I felt it was right, even though um, sometimes in football red cards happen, that's part of the game, but um, it was such a big moment for everyone, a big World Cup for everyone. Um, I thought we, we were doing well in the tournament. Um, I feel if I, if I stayed on the pitch, we would have won the game. Um, so I just felt it was right for me to apologise because I had um, I had let, it, let everyone down. Everyone knows you you haven't done it to purposely to to damage everyone else's chances in the World Cup. But these moments happen. It's happened many times. It happened with David Beckham in in '98. Um, it's happened with players since. So it's um, unfortunately that's part of the game, which um, you don't like to see happen to to many players. After that World Cup, the spotlight was on you and Cristiano like massively. Um, how did you both deal with that? Well, we went and won the Premier League. So, <laughs> no, listen. I spoke to I spoke to Cristiano um, in the tunnel after the game, after I got sent off, um, and immediately after we'd been knocked out and I'd apologised to the players. My focus fully turned on Manchester United um, again. So. Um, I'd sent someone into Portugal's restroom to bring Cristiano out. I think he might have been thinking, what's going to happen here? Um, but then I, I said to him, um, listen, um, good luck for the rest of the tournament. Um, when you when the tournament ends for you, um, the, 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 all the press are going to be at, at me, they're going to be at you. Um, we need to make sure we're focused to do our best for Manchester United. And that was it. Tevez. Tevis? Yeah. Why Tevis? Just to love the way um, our connection, um, the two of us up front, and we complemented each other really well because normally a lot of time if I play with Louis Sahar or Van Nistelrooy, um, Van Persie, 
these strikers were always the number nine, that plays a number ten or a bit deeper. But with Tevez, we could rotate, so I'd be nine, um, then he'd take the nine spot, I'd be ten, and we'd rotate. But then when we lose the ball, we'd just be running around like two balls trying to get it back. So um, he was the one really as a strike partner I enjoyed playing with most. And then when you see him join Man City, your nearest rivals, um, how did that feel? It's devastating. Yeah, I just because I enjoyed playing with them that much and. I, could, I knew something was going on because there was the issue with um, his ownership in, in terms of who owned him, whether it was a club, whether it was agent, um, and it was actually very cheap to buy him. And for whatever reason, we didn't let, we didn't buy him. I think Man City got him for about 20 million, which is incredible, really. And um, you see him what a good player and great player he is when he went there. So yeah, I was devastated. The, the FA Cup final in 2005 against Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, I found two, and that was that was a painful day. Yeah, we absolutely battered them. Uh, went to extra time, lost on penalties, and that was a tough one. After a loss like that, how did Sir Alex Ferguson come in and pick the team up? Like, how do you get the team going again next season? It makes you more determined, I think. Um, it makes you want it even more. In, in some way, the um, knowing you're so close. Um, and then, and that's what I'm saying about the reaction. You you rarely see the characters of players and and the character of a person when you 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 have such a a defeat which hurts so much that you can get over it and come back from that. Um, some players didn't come back from it um, from that defeat, um, but you see the real characters in the team who who actually get you through that. Um, so like we touched on on Sir Alex there. Um, he's famous, obviously, for losing his temper and being a bit of a spiky character. Um, what was the biggest argument that you two had? <laughs> well, we actually had, I'd say, almost every game at halftime. Almost every game? Yeah. Paint, paint us a picture. How did, how did that happen? No, it's just, you see, the way the game was, was going. He'd have a go and he'd have a go at me. Um, if Nani or Cristiano was, was dribbling a lot and losing the ball, He'd come in at half time and, and have a go at me for dribbling. And he knew that I'd get me fired. I'm looking, thinking, are you joking here? Um, I've got these two dribbling constantly, losing the ball, and you're having a go at me. And then I'd go back at him. And he, but he knew that I'd get a good reaction out of me. And that was his way of saying to, to these two, stop dribbling the ball. Because if he said to these two, there'd, there'd probably be tears. Yeah, and he, he enjoyed it. He knew what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. He enjoyed. I was having to go back because um, he knew that I'd get fired the rest of the players up or he knew I played on um, on the edge, especially at that time, um, and he knew that would get me going. The best leader, I'd say, it depends, everyone's different. So I didn't play that long with Roy Keane. Then we have Vidic as captain. Um, Guy Neville as captain. I don't know, there's, there was so many different leaders in that team. I think Steven Gerrard was really good at uh, England. Just determined, quiet, but a lot of determination. You could see what it meant to him. Guy Neville was good, very good, but frustrating as well because a lot of the stuff he does frustrates me. But he was a, a good leader. Can you give us an example? Just talks too much. <laughs> um, basically talks too much and um, rubs his nose in a lot of different subjects and um, which I don't think he's got any any involvement in. What makes those players good leaders? Like, what what qualities do they have? I think leading by example, because you can have people who shout and all over the dressing room. Um, but I think the, as I was saying, Stephen Gerrard, um, not the most vocal in the dressing room, but goes out on the pitch and leads by example. Um, so I think the the best leaders are the, the ones who actually go out there and and um, and do it on the pitch and. And especially when you're going through a tough moment in a game and they can drag you out of it. But there's one or two where I think we could have performed a lot better and got into finals and if we had that ruthless clinical edge to us, something missing, I don't know what it was, but that's the big that's the thing that always sticks with me. With United, honestly, I couldn't have given any more at any point in any second of any day. I, I genuinely feel that. It's not bragging, it's not being arrogant. I genuinely gave my all 